Molly McCann, what a difference 12 months makes. You know, This time last year, heading into UFC London, you were in a dark place, you'd made your debut, it didn't work out, you were you know, asking yourself the big questions, mm -hmm. do you belong, is this the right sport? Yeah. Wow, 12 months on, three straight wins, I know. you're flying. I know, just before Christmas, or just before the new year, uh, MMA stats online came out and a lot of stuff came to like to the forefront which we didn't know like I, I landed the third most significant strikes out of anyone in the UFC I landed the six most takedowns anyone in the UFC I won three fights in eight months and this is from the girl who got put night night in in the echo do you know what I mean um, a massive year for for me personal growth out of the cage and in the cage and and even the gym, you know, like everyone's a lot more mature because of that loss and everyone's flying and it's it's a rolling, reoccurring theme now. Has it been a case of steady progress over the last 12 months? After UFC London, after that big win, you've, you've built on it and you've built momentum. Because yeah. I know you've changed your camp and you've changed the people you're working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I got, I got to the UFC of heart and and not much else, you know what I mean? Like, there was no science behind it. There was no, it was all guesstimation work and bringing Carl Evans in and, and Paul Reed adding on to the team in terms of nutrition and strength and condition. I am just someone else sitting in front of you than who I was like a year and a half ago. And, and now if I look at myself to the girl who won the world title in the UFC and to the girl who, eh, the girl who won the world title in Cage Warriors, to the girl who won in London in the UFC, it's just it's just two different people, um, and it was just a lot of sitting down, looking at myself, not being in a comfortable place, Nick, not being in a place where it it was nice to sit in my skin and it was nice to walk down the street and it, it just it just weren't nice. But I don't know that famous saying, if you're in hell, keep going. Do you know what I mean? I just I just believed that I was worth more and I was. And the people around me was telling me that I was, and I weren't just going to be defined by one loss. But when you've never been prepared for it, like when Fishy lost or when Darren lost or when I lost, we all really changed, you know, and we all changed as people. And we just, it, losing's not in our vocabulary and it's not in our DNA. We don't like it. So it was just a lot, lot of hard work, to be honest. It's an old cliche that they say in fight sports, you learn a lot more from a loss. But without that loss in Liverpool, you don't go on a three-fight unbeaten no, run in the UFC because you had to change everything. Yeah, I didn't sit there and think the best was my best, and I didn't have Paul Reed coming and showing me a picture of me weighing, going, "You're telling me that's the best version of yourself that you, that you can be." You're telling me you did everything that you you thought you could do, and I was like, "Well, that's not the best picture to be looking at." Do you know what I mean? And especially for a girl to admit that it's solid, but. The only thing is I had to point was myself. Coaches tried to take the blame, nutritionists tried to take the blame. Ultimately, it's my fault. I'm the one who's getting in there. Paul Rimmer was like, I, I take 70% of that, I'm your jiu-jitsu coach, blah, 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 blah. I was like, no, Rim, it's me, it's my fault. Do you know what I mean? And taking up acceptance of what you've done, it helps you, do you know what I mean? And then when these people have come in and start and saying, right, well, if you do this, do this and do this, you will do this. And it just, it happens. And, how many times have we sat there and said them hundred days of jiu-jitsu where I just gave myself to, to something that I wasn't comfortable doing because I wasn't good at it. Not because I didn't enjoy it, not because I wasn't about the jiu-jitsu life, but my style isn't one that people would want to watch on Polaris or Eddie Bravo Invitational, do you know what I mean? I am just like an aggressive wrestler kind of and, and it doesn't look nice in jiu-jitsu, but it, it, we now know it does work in MMA because it's been working this year. But all of that had to come into effect for me to, like you say, to get to this free fight win streak and the role, the little snowball that we're on. When you went into London 12 months ago, it was very much rehabilitation, very much it was all on the line, very much proving to yourself that you belong here. Mm -hmm. You did that. You recorded two more wins on the back of that. And now we sit in 2020, heading into UFC London. And now we're talking about Molly McCann as a potential title contender. I know, I just... It's madness because even though we'd have changed that much, I would have probably been thinking all on ego and being like, yeah, and being loud about it and being so vocal about it. But now we're just like, 
I just let it sit with me, do you know what I mean? And, and I'm not focusing too much far ahead. And even though I know I'm wavy and I really know I'm top 10 level, I really know I'm top five level, I just need them fights to prove that I am. It's just like, let's just not run there. Let's just, just keep keep steady pace. I'm, I'm gonna be, is it the turtle that wins in the- Absolutely. In, yeah, or the tur tortoise, whatever it's called. I just, that's now my, my way of getting there. And I know with the team that I've got behind me, I haven't got to rush because I know my body's gonna get there. And I'm not gonna break down because of everything that we're doing outside of, of my MMA training. And I know that my knowledge as a fighter and my IQ is a lot more, is so much better now than what it was before. But I still step into every single fight. And I don't know if many fighters do this or if they're honest about it, but I still think, am I good enough to beat this person? Ultimately, everyone will because they'll get them nerves and be like, oh, I'm not sure, but I'm probably really real with myself. And be like, well, this girl is really, really good at that. So you need to be really good at that. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just, I don't sugarcoat it or I don't lie about what's going on. And, um, and I still think I've, I'll, I'll probably will win the belt and still think like, I still need more acceptance or I haven't done enough still, do you know what I mean? Because that's probably just in my DNA of who I am. Your legacy is one of being a pioneer, first English woman to win in the UFC, obviously first to win three fights, hopefully soon first well, to get a stoppage in the UFC. Yeah. Your legacy seems assured in that regard, but has it got to end with the title? Because you're also a role model now, not yeah. just for young girls, but yeah. boys, other fighters coming through. They look yeah. at your background, what you came through as a child, the upbringing you had, and see you now as a winner. That, is, that in itself is legacy defining stuff. Yeah, I feel like when you get to these parts of your career, um, you do start talking about legacy because you're starting to look at more the end goal because you're getting there and what's going to be after, what do you do after. And I think I always used to say, like, as long as people knew, when I'm finished fighting, if someone can say, that Molly, every time she got in the cage, she left it in there and she could have a go. But you know what, outside the cage, she was just a nicer person and just, give all the time to anyone, Joe Bloggs, you know, that's the kind of legacy that I want to leave. And it used to be so much more about, um, not so much status in a bad way, but maybe bragging rights for your family and maybe like, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. When it's not really like that, it's, I don't fight for that reason no more. And I used to think about the money. And when I lost, the first thing I thought was, oh my God, I'm only getting half a paycheck. And that kind of thing isn't anything that I'm thinking about anymore. But like you say, to be called a pioneer or a trailblazer or whatever narrative anyone wants to give it, it is nice to know that I can have an impact in people, young people, old people, whoever. Um, to make a right decision or to change their life in a certain way. It's it's fulfilling to know that you can you can take from that and I don't just need to fight to be able to feel fulfilled. Yeah. I know growing up you suffered bullying and things like that. Mm. To now be a star, superstar in a lot of people's eyes, a role model. You're showing people from working class neighbourhoods worldwide yeah. that hard work, dedication, you can achieve anything. It. That's it, and I'm sure when we done the, the little mini doc for when Darren was brought the UFC to Liverpool, I was like, it's a cliche, but like as long as you keep working hard and you don't give in on your dream, like you're gonna get there. And I am trying to personify that, and I don't think anyone's took a loss worse than me that I've known of how I took that, and but how I've come back just proves just proves that. You know what I mean? And. I never really got that deep into what went on when I grew up and I still really haven't like gone that deep into what happened but I even know when I've spoke to like the likes of Paddy O'Hulahan when I've gone on his podcast and stuff, when you come from a working class background and you come from a council estate, when you're succeeding, everyone else's dreams are tied and latched onto you. So you must succeed for these because it's not just for you, it's for everyone around you. And, and that carry, there is a lot of pressure that you carry with that. But also, I've said it a million times, it lights the fire up your bum when you're about to eat a chocolate bar or, oh, do I really need to do this run? Because my weight's all right. Now it's like, get up off your ass and get round the Nugent Park. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? You've got something to prove. Mm -hmm. It's nice as well that you're still so connected with your family. You still live 
in and nanny's a, spare room. In nanny's spare room <laughs> yeah. and not a screen, obviously. Yeah. I know your mum's with you today and all that. Yeah. It must be great to show them as well, but all the work's been worth it. I said to my mum, I said, do you remember the first time we'd done anything for Cage Warriors? And it was like, they invited us to Everton and we got to meet a few of the players and they spoke about us. And then UFC Liverpool, I got to bring the whole family. Like, imagine doing your first ever UFC, it's hometown. You're getting as much as applause as the main event. Everyone wants to know. And they all get, like, my nephew was there. My nephew was at the open workouts and then... I texted my mum asking, did she want to come here today? Because it's halfway a little bit for me and her to, to meet up. But I can only imagine how proud this is for her to see little Molly who's been through whatever. To like, we're in the BT studios having a conversation and it puts things into perspective when you think, oh, it's only fighting, it's nothing, but it's obviously affecting or touching a lot of people. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Absolutely. Let's talk about London, Ashley Evans-Smith. Different mm -hmm. dynamic now because mm -hmm. you're no longer Molly the underdog that people undervalue. Mm -hmm. You're now Molly the prospect that people are looking at and thinking, mm -hmm. okay, she's really going to do something. Yeah. She's going to come here. She's, in, in a lot of eyes, especially of UK fans, certainly going to be the underdog. Is it a different kind of pressure for you now? I don't feel like I'm not the underdog. Whereas I probably carry this chip on my shoulder, which most strikers will. If you've been beat and beat by a grappler, you're always going to carry this stigma with you of like, no, I need to prove myself against every grappler that I can out grapple or I can ne negate the space, stop the takedown and punish them for it. And I just feel, I wonder if my opponents sit there and think, F I've got Molly McCann. Do you know what I mean? You because, want them to. Yeah. Of course. But I don't know how I, I don't think that about my opponents. I, I, I put them on this pedestal where I have to respect them so much. I, I dedicate 15 to eight weeks of my life to nothing but them. And then when I get in there, it's like there's no respect there. It, it's like I'm taking you to school and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish you the best way that I know how. But because I've followed her before I had even had a fight, I've known her from when she's beat all kinds of people to the point where she came to the UFC to when she dropped to 135, to so now she's dropped to a flyweight. I followed her because I always thought she was mustard. Mm. And I thought her style's her heart and willingness to win is very much like mine. And it's not it's not like she's ever been finished stupid. It's probably been a submission from being overzealous and like trying to get the finish and the girls caught an armbar or I remember she was fighting Raquel Pennington and she was beating her and then just got caught in the bulldog choke, went out and then the fight was over, like on the bell. Do you know what I mean? So this girl is Fought the best in the world. She's been top eight at bantamweight. I think she's been like top six at flyweight. So she's achieved more in the UFC than what I have in terms of rankings. Um, I've just got to, this is my time to shine. I've said to everyone, this was like when, when Darren fought Cerrone for me. Yeah. This is this kind of same kind of fight. And it's one I'm, I'm relishing and can't kind of, I can't wait to get in there and, and do the business. and and just be able to put that chapter of my life to bed. Like, I've done unlimited jiu-jitsu competitions. I've done sub-only competitions. That's been live on Flow Grappling. I've fought, I've had jiu-jitsu fights, sorry, not fought. People who I never thought I'd stand a chance with submitted or like beat on submission attempts. And I just think, why do I undervalue how good I actually am? But it works to my advantage because even though I might suffer in camp in here, I never suffer in a fight, do you yeah. know what I mean? Of all the fighters I speak to and you ask them if you could pick, predict what your outcome's going to be of the fight, yeah. it's generally always a submission or an early knockout, but every time I speak Me. to you, I always say, I want a three-round war, I yeah. want fight of the night. Yeah. Where does that come from? Are you, are you trying to punish yourself? Or? Oh, so this is the thing. So I've had finishes and it used to, they used to come a lot more easier than what they do now, but the level's just levelled up. And I just think... My style is to break someone and it's to punish you and make you quit and make you not want to get up the stool and make me go, come on then. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to speak to you and I'm going to get you out of your game so bad that you give me something. And it's like every step in this UFC journey, I've took so much from each fight and everyone can see how much I've evolved. And, and the last three fights, how I haven't had a, had a finish, I'll never know. But it's, it's made for the journey that I'm on. And 
I don't know, I'm not getting ahead of myself still. Maybe if I'd finished all these fights, I'd start walking around like someone else. I, I don't know, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? But for a certain purpose, this has happened and it's just making me trick. Like someone was saying, oh, don't get complacent though, Mal. Uh, like, make sure you're still training and all that. And I just looked at them and I was like, what the f you mean? It's like, I haven't got a finish. I'm still not ranked. I'm no one yet. I said, so I'm going to be training more for something I've never got than, than I normally would, do you know what I mean? And I'm telling you, this fight camp, I'm looking like this and it's eight weeks out and I've been going since f 15 weeks prior just because I need, I'm not chasing it to the point that it's unhealthy, but I want that seal of approval where it's like, yes, I finally got it, do you know what I mean? And I just can't rush with it, but I'm like that, that possessed, that when Connor says like, it's obsession, it's obsession, it really is. It really is. You're used to knocking people out. You did it so much before you come in the yeah. UFC, but <laughs> yeah. I still get that that feeling that a submission so, finish oh, that would be like. I think Paul Rim would probably have a cardiac arrest in the corner, <laughs> wouldn't he? Like, I still don't feel like neck. I'm team next gen until I've got him an armbar, a rear naked choke, or a, a fishy special guillotine, even a, a paddy flying triangle. Do you know what I mean? I feel like. I don't know, I get guillotines from everywhere and I get bulldog chokes from everywhere and I'm starting to get arm bars from everywhere. I can get a double leg or a single leg from anywhere and I can punch your head in now any time I take you down. Um, but for me, it's about... A, who was it? Joe Mack says to me, Molly, you're a performer. You might not win in rounds in the gym. He said, but the second that light goes on, you come to life and you can do what it takes to win. And, um, and I do when I perform and you feel a difference in there. You feel a difference when you're fighting to when you're performing. When you're fighting, you can be a little bit tired. Like, my last fight felt like a, like a fight. Yeah. It was like I was against the cosh, I wasn't well, and it was just anything. Like, you cannot lose in front of Dana White in Boston. Like, just throw your whole self to it. But then the fight with Lipsky, it was like I was dancing and I was Ali shuffling, slipping, and I was she was dancing to the beat of my drum. and. And then I wasn't tired, and so much more happens when you fight that way. When you compete, you're not fighting, you're competing, and I just, that's how I have to stay. Because you'll get glimpses of like old meatball where I'm just going to push you, rough you up, and dirty box you, and probably put an elbow on the side of your jaw, and you, you know, like, <laughs> start mini pinching your ribs and all that. But um, yeah, I've, I'm learning to stick to a game plan, which. I never learned until the, the loss in the UFC. There was no, it was like, go on, Mal, go and do you. And yeah. I got to such a level by doing me, but now it's like, no, now you're a, you're a professional athlete and you're one of the, the, the top in the world, so. Absolutely. Plot the next 12 months for us then. How do we get that ranking first and foremost? And ultimately, is it this year? Is it next year? Is it the year after that you're looking at a potential title shot? Are you thinking that well, big yet? Yeah, I am thinking that big, this, this camp. The way that I'm training, the the only way I've been truly beat was was poor weight making, so I wasn't able to make fast decisions under pressure. I, would, I then went and worked so hard on jiu-jitsu, thinking that was the, the problem when it, it just weren't. But now I've got, now I'm comfortable on the floor, my style doesn't have to, I don't have to be that burnt out thinking if she takes that angle, I'm like, it's the beginning of, of the end. And now I can let go, stay in the pocket, defend the takedown and crack on, do you know what I mean? So by the end, I, I truly believe this fight's got to get me top 15. It yep. has to get me top 15. By the end of the year, I'd like to be a, a contender and aim up there. And I truly believe if I take the longest route there, it'll be next year. And that's absolutely fine with me. Like. I'll earn me money on the way to the top um, and when I get there, I'll be that clinical and my thought process will be that switched on. That it'll just come natural then, do you know what I mean? Girl from Liverpool, hasn't changed one bit. No. But look at them trainers, look at them, they're tremendous. Think nobody else in not a screen walking <laughs> around with them, I'm telling you now. I don't know, all the studios have all got mad trainees now, haven't they? So I'm just blending in, they're to boss. be honest. I want a pair. Yeah, well, he was in the... January Have you spent your same. performance bonus before you've even got your bonus here? No, the last bonus got me this watch, didn't it? But um, <laughs> hopefully I'll get the 50 grand one day. One day I'll get it, but 
I don't know, I've had a few good performances and... You'll be under pressure then to throw a street party. Everyone on your nan's street will be like, Molly's throwing <laughs> a party! <laughs> Molly got paid! It's no, party time! Do you know what? Any time that I... I go out with the gym now or with any of my mates, it's like it's danger because it's just like we'll either get free drinks everywhere all night <laughs> or it's all on my card. So we, I don't go out that way, much anymore. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Brilliant.